This episode is sponsored by Vikings, War of Clans. So Vikings feels like the top strategy game from the 90s and 2000s, but finally on mobile and in 3D. While there are hundreds of strategy games in the App Store, Vikings is on a different level. It's one of the more addicting games that I've played recently. Just play it for five minutes and you'll see why. It's famous for its massive online battles between clans and even countries with over 3 million players attending these events. So click on the links down below in the description and get 200 gold for a fast and successful start. What's up guys, David here, and the iPhone 8 is just around the corner. Like nobody knows exactly when it's gonna come out. Maybe it'll be in September. Maybe there'll be some sort of delay. The rumor mill is still undecided, but one thing that almost all the rumors and leaks are pointing to is that the iPhone 8, whenever it comes out, is gonna be packing some serious power under the hood thanks to the all new A11 chip from Apple. But until the iPhone 8 officially gets released, there's no way of knowing exactly how much performance it'll actually bring to the table, how it'll perform in the real world. But that doesn't mean that we can't get a little sneak peek to give us a rough idea. You see, last year, before the iPhone 7 came out, we did a speed test between the iPhone 6S, which was powered by the Apple A9, and the iPad Pro, which was powered by the beefed up A9X. And it turned out that the beefed up iPad Pro's performance was pretty damn close to how the iPhone 7 ended up performing in our tests. I mean, it wasn't like a perfect comparison, a perfect match, but definitely in the ballpark. So today, we're gonna be doing the the same exact thing. But this time around, we're gonna be testing the A10 Fusion in the iPhone 7 against the all new iPad Pro, which is using the beefed up A10X, which not only has an additional Fusion Core at three cores instead of two, but it's also manufactured using the new 10 nanometer process. So definitely a more powerful chip, and until the iPhone 8 officially drops, it'll be the most powerful chip you can get on any iOS device. So with that said, Let's get to the speed test and see if we can get a little sneak peek to how the iPhone 8 will end up performing. All right, we'll get things going by starting with the stopwatches on each device, where on your left, you have the iPad Pro with the new six core A10X chip, and on your right, you have the iPhone 7 with the regular quad core A10 Fusion. Now, going into Facebook, the iPhone 7 gets the step over the iPad, which probably had to do a little bit with the iPad having to load more content due to its bigger screen. But after loading a Photoshop mix at a faster rate than the iPhone, the iPad is right back into it, where it'll be interesting to see how much of a difference there is here in lapses, where Wow, the iPad Pro and the A10X is just ripping through this time lapse, completely smoking the iPhone 7, and already moving on to the gaming row. And there you go, the iPhone 7 finishes up with the time lapse at what seemed to be a snail's pace, even though it's faster than almost any other smartphone out there. So, promising results right there from the A10X. Of course, what may be more applicable to the performance we can expect from the iPhone 8 is how the iPad Pro does here in the gaming row, where so far it's loaded every game at a faster rate than the iPhone 7. We'll have the load up times from this first lap at the end of the video, so stick around for that. But for now, the iPad Pro finishes up with the gaming row and pulls a full lap ahead of the iPhone 7 after loading every game, including Bullet Force, at a faster rate. So impressive results so far, especially when you consider that in all likelihood, the iPhone 8 and the new A11 chip will offer even better performance. Okay, here we go. The iPad Pro finishes the first lap with a time of one minute and 24 seconds, with the iPhone 7 working on that last leg of the first lap, loading up the Apple website, where it finishes the first lap a full 10 seconds later with a time of one minute and 34 seconds. So I know 10 seconds doesn't seem like all that big of a difference, but when you consider that the difference between the iPhone 7 and the iPhone 6s was only 12 seconds, 10 seconds is a pretty big deal, and there's a good chance that the iPhone 8 will only improve on that number, which is saying a lot considering that the iPhone 7 is already one of the fastest smartphones in the world. And that's before iOS 11 brings improvements to animation speeds. So I am excited for the iPhone 8. Of course, this video isn't official by any means, it's just speculation based off of past trends, but there you go, the iPhone 7 finishes the test 10 seconds later, so the entire difference was in that first lap where the processors were put to the test, which just may be a sign of what's coming with the iPhone 8. Anyways, that is it for me in this video. Be sure to subscribe for the official speed test when the iPhone 8 launches. Thank you guys for watching, and as always, I'll see you in the very next episode.